Hi, my name is Greg Perkins. I am the instructor for this class, Math 13 at Hartnell College. Section 1.1 is pretty basic, got a few definitions and then some critical thinking. First of all, the total group that is to be studied, that is called the population. So if you wanted to study the whole United States, all the people in the United States, then that would be some 315 or 318 million people. That would be a lot, but that would be the population. Of course, since that's a lot of people, you may want to just go out and interview 70 people throughout the United States. Well, any subgroup like that is called the sample. And it's best if you choose the sample at random. Don't just interview your friends. You gotta go out, go out and meet some strangers. Now when you collect data from the sample, how tall are you, what's your age, how much money do you make, who did you vote for, that type of information when it comes from a sample, that's called statistics. If you do the same thing for the whole population, that's called parameter. And I remember it because S starts with sample, statistics starts with sample, parameter starts with P, population starts with P. So you might figure, find out their hair color, age, their weight, how many cars do they own, something like that. So one part of the critical thinking is people should not be able to choose to join a sample. So for example, people are asked to text the word either yes or no to some number to indicate whether they liked a movie. So what's wrong with this? Most people aren't going to do it. Most people are like, yeah, I don't have the time. The people that feel very strongly, yes, I loved that movie, that character with the red hair with a little bit of gray, he was awesome. Well, or the people that really don't like it at all. So basically, you're just going to get the extremes. Look, for example, at Amazon ratings. So I don't even remember what this was for, but something. So who's going to take the time to go and rate it? Basically, those people that really like it or those people that really don't like it. If it's an average customer and they're like, yeah, it's toothpaste, yeah, it works, fine. Are they going to go take the time to go and rate it? No, mostly those people that have the strongest opinions would take the time to go and rate it. Then, just think critically about this. Suppose that there's this quote, 50% of Catholics say they would be in favor of having female priests. So what's wrong with this statement? Now, with this, I'm not talking about should the Catholic Church have female priests or not, but just think critically, 50% of Catholics. Well, there are Catholics all throughout the world. So did they interview people from all throughout the world? Because perhaps people in the Philippines and people in Italy, people in the United States, because of the cultural differences, they might have different answers, which actually has nothing to do with Catholicism. So basically just think critically, where did this come from? Who are these Catholics? And did they talk to men and women, boys and girls? Who did they talk to? So take a look at this graph. Does it seem reliable? So this is con congressional job approval. So the question they asked was, do you approve or disapprove of the way Congress is handling its job? And this is going back from 1974 all the way to 2020. So does it seem reliable? Well, this comes from Gallup, and I know that the Gallup polls have been around for many, many years. And I personally think that, yeah, Gallup is a reliable source. Also, I look for, like, right over here would be 2001, 2002. And then they said Congress is doing a great job, 84%. So that was after 9-11, shortly after 9-11. Then people were thinking Congress is doing a good job. More recently, 9% approval in about 2013 and 21% approval in about 2020. So to me, yes, this does seem reliable. And it looks like over here, they used to have long gaps when they would 
between the times when they ask the question, and here you can see they're asking more and more frequently. Back in 1985, they probably had to go outside and talk to a human being. Over here, perhaps they are calling people, or maybe they're still talking to human beings, I don't know, but I do find it reliable. Now, is it 100% accurate? I doubt it, but it seems like a reliable source of information. Next up, just categorize, in your opinion, does it seem possible, likely, or impossible? Part A, it will rain tomorrow. Well, in California, it doesn't rain very much anymore, so I would say it's possible, but not very likely at all. So maybe I should have had not likely in there also. So out of the choices, I would say possible, but I think it's unlikely it's going to rain tomorrow in California. Part B, Justin Bieber will be the President of the United States someday. That is impossible. Not because of politics, but because he's Canadian. Yep. So, can't be a Canadian citizen and then be the President of the United States. So, what are some problems in here? I claim that 80% of the class will pass with a C or better. What if I claim that 80.4% of all my previous students have passed with a C or better? So if I claim that 80% of the class will pass, I'm trying to predict the future. So if you've seen the way that I pick stocks, you can tell that I don't know how to predict the future. So the first one is trying to predict the future, and I don't know what you're basing that first statement on. Okay, move on to the second one. I claim that of my previous students, so now that's something that really did happen in the past, and look at I'm being more accurate because I'm saying 80.4%. So that makes it look like I got out my calculator and I added up all the students that got C's or better, total all the students over the last 28 years, and then divided and I got 80.4%. Actually, it's a pretty good estimate, but I didn't actually calculate the numbers, but it is around 80% that'll pass the class. But by putting that 0.4, it's just a little bit tiny of a deception, just trying to say, oh, look at how accurate I am. I know how to use a 0.4. So that's some critical thinking there. Okay, now look at the stock prices. So if you go to September 2019, Apple stock price was $54. September 2020, 110. Now that is truthful information. I did actually look that up. But look at the graph. Is that an accurate portrayal of the information? Well, if you take a 54 and double it, it would be a 108. So this price right here is approximately double this price. But if you look at the bars, is this one, or excuse me, is this bigger one two times bigger than this one? No, to me it looks like it's, it looks like the tall one is about three times bigger. And the problem is, over here, I should have started the scale at zero. So I started at 40, which then makes this look disproportionate. So if somebody, if somebody was just looking at the graph, they would go, oh wow, it like tripled in price. But actually, it doubled in price. Suppose you call someone's house as a part of a survey and you ask how much they pay for gas. Is there anything wrong with that? So for one thing, if you call somebody, oh my gosh, I just showed how old I am, called someone's house. How do you know, everybody has a phone with them wherever they go, how do you know they're at their house? Okay, it used to be we had landlines and the landlines are in the house. Anyway, is, and you ask how much they pay for gas. Anything wrong with this? Well, for one, um, a lot of people will not answer a phone, a phone call from a stranger's number, so you might have a hard time getting people to even answer the, the phone in the first place. You ask some stranger, calls you, and asks how much you pay for gas, you're probably going to hang up on them. Then even if you get the person to talk to you, how much do they pay for gas? So... Three dollars? 
three dollars and ten cents. I think that I think I paid three oh nine the last time I filled up my tank. So the people might not even know, and then they just guess a number. Next up, your test scores are 65, 70, 78, 83, and 100. Is 80 above average? The problem with this is the word average is sort of vague. We haven't covered this yet, but we will soon. For average, there's the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid-range are all types of averages. So when you say the word average, which one are you talking about? The mean would mean that you add up the five numbers and divide by five. The median would be the middle number. So the middle number is 78. In that case, if you're talking about the median, yeah, 80 is above the median. Finally, just a little bit of work with some fractions, percents, and decimals. So if you take a calculator and go to divided by five, it's going to tell you a 0.4 or a 0 0.40. And then if you move the decimal over two places, that means 40%. So there's the fraction, the decimal, and the percent form, all of the same number. So for 88%, that's the same. Well, actually, the word per cent is saying per hundred, because cent means hundred, so per hundred. So this is actually saying 88 per hundred. So 88 per 100 means you divide by 100 and you could reduce that to 22 over 25 so just divide by 4 on the top and divide by 4 on the bottom and then fill out this table so a 0.9 if you move the decimal two places to the right that's going to be 90 percent and that means the fraction would be 90 over 100 whoops sorry about that hit the wrong button so this one would be 90 over 100. 24%, that would be 0.24, and the fraction would be 24 over 100. One half, when you divide it, that's a 0.5, and one half means 50%. And finally, two-thirds, that would be 0.667, or 66.7%.